Hello everyone, I'm Andre from Mental Health. It's day three of the BAP 2024 conference here in Birmingham and I'm here with Professor Belinda Lennox from Oxford. Good morning, how are you doing? Hey, good morning Andre, lovely to see you. You too. So BAP has been a part of your life I think for quite some time. Yeah, what does it mean to you as an organisation, as a conference? Yeah, well, I suppose as a British psychopharmacologist, the BAP has always been the premier meeting for us to get together. And I suppose what I really love is the sort of the clinicians and the non-clinicians and the real cutting edge research, what's come out from the early career researchers that year, the students and the postdocs. It's a really vibrant community of largely British psychopharmacologists and has always been, people have made a priority of coming here every year. So I really enjoy coming and I always learn something new. It's easy to take that for granted, isn't it? The fact that you've got this really high quality scientific meeting every year. Mm. You just presume I'm going to go along and see all my friends and learn something and make new connections. But I guess that doesn't just happen by chance. There's a lot of work behind that. I think that's right. I think it's carefully curated um, and always mindful of having a really broad mixture of topic areas. Um, particularly, I'm thinking of things like addiction psychiatry, which mm. is a really sort of small area of research, but hugely important. And I think David Nutton has been a prominent member and Linford Hughes as well. I always learn something about different areas of research, not just psychosis, which, of course, I do day in, day out. Yeah. And I guess it's the combination of people. It is a real mix of academics and clinicians. Mm. Yeah. But why is that important, do you think? I think you just get out of your bubble, really. I think it's just different perspectives. I mean, of course, you always have to have the clinic in mind. You also always have to have the patient in mind. But actually, a range of approaches from the preclinical molecular research is always important just to have that range of perspectives. And you don't know where the breakthroughs are going to come from. So where are we now, do you think, in our understanding of psychosis and the way that we help people with psychosis. Is this an exciting time? It feels like we've been through some doldrums over the last few decades. Yeah, yeah I think that's fair. I'm doing a session tomorrow afternoon, looking backwards and looking forwards. And I found it initially quite sobering, hmm. a bit depressing. I've been a psychiatrist for a bit over 25 years now. And really, what's the progress that we've made? I can say that we use exactly the same drugs, really, that we used 25 years ago. I think we look after people in a more holistic way. We are more psychologically minded. We include families in people's treatments, but actually the pharmacology of what we use to treat psychosis, which is still the mainstay of treatment, it's still the most effective treatments that we have not progressed. So that is a bit sobering. But coming back to your mm. point, I think, yes, it is an exciting time. And I am genuinely hopeful and optimistic that there are brighter times on the horizon. I guess one of the massive things here at BAP this year, and maybe for the last few years, is this kind of psychedelic renaissance. I'm always wondering whether that's as exciting as people make out. Does that have anything helpful to say for people with psychosis? Uh, not obviously. But again, that's a real back to the future, isn't it? Nothing's new in this world, Andre. They were giving psychedelics in the 1970s mm -hmm. with gay abandon. It's not new, actually. So the new focus and perhaps the more targeted way and the ability to look at the sort of underpinning mechanisms is new, but the, the ability to conduct proper clinical trials using these substances remains a real challenge. But I think what I'm getting at is the excitement about psychedelics. A lot of funders seem to be getting very excited about that. A lot of academic groups say, oh, let's focus on that now. And once again, we're leaving behind people with severe mental illness. What, what is exciting? What is the priority yeah. for people with psychosis? I think that is exactly right. And I think particularly the withdrawal of, of most of the pharmaceutical companies, if not all of them, over mm. the last 25 years has been devastating for our field. But now for the first time, we have new compounds with new mechanisms of action that really have promising signals at phase two and coming through to phase three studies. So genuinely novel ways of targeting different symptoms as well. I suppose that's what's so exciting. Mm. So in psychosis, we focus on the positive symptoms, on the hallucinations and delusions, and they're relatively straightforward to treat. We know how to do that. Mm. But actually the most disabling symptoms are the cognitive impairment and the negative symptoms. Those are ones that really impact people's day-to-day -day lives. And these new drugs that are targeting muscarinic um, systems or GABA, um, signaling systems, you know, that they potentially improve those symptoms that are most disabling to people. So that's particularly why they're so exciting. 
So for people who don't know much about the science, who aren't familiar with those new interventions, give us a sense of what's going to happen from here to potentially those reaching clinical practice. Well, they're already going through, they have gone through some of them, phase three studies, so large population studies to look at effectiveness in a sort of broad population of people with psychosis. And if those are are positive, then it's a matter of going through the regulatory authorities. And the big one that we're all focusing on, the CAR-XT drug, the Corona Therapeutics, that's going through FDA approvals as we speak and may potentially be available to people within months, which is wonderfully exciting. And I guess the big question is side effects with those sorts of medications, because that's what's so disabling about antipsychotics. Yes. How, How do they measure up in that sense? Well, of course, that's always a balance, isn't it, is uh, treatment's got to be acceptable as well as effective. And I suppose that's the, the sort of the development with this drug, CAR-XT, is because actually it was developed m- many years ago and found to be helpful, but it was intolerable. It gave terrible side effects. So the new sort of formulation of the drug is to actually add it into an additional drug that blocks the peripheral side effects. So they're very hopeful. But of course, that's something that we have to monitor that actually it's acceptable to people, yeah. And I guess a lot of the... Finally, the kind of strategic approach here is repurposing, isn't it? There's a lot of drugs here that we haven't thought about using for psychiatry. That's not a change in practice, is it? Because that's what we've always done in mental health. But how do you go about doing that? Yeah, that's something I'm particularly interested in, actually, because I, I really had my mind blown by a meeting in London by a lot of cancer researchers Mm. and they 20 years ago worked out that instead of having a trial where you just have one compound versus another one or versus a a dummy treatment and you take five years to test that out and then you may or may not work Mm. that that's a completely inefficient waste of everybody's time that actually if you did a big trial with multiple arms that you had early indicators whether something was effective and if it wasn't you ditch it and you put something else in And you try out a whole load of different drugs that had different mechanisms of actions that can rapidly tell you how to change treatment. That was the way to go. And that's what they did 20 years ago in cancer. And it absolutely transformed clinical trials in that area. And we haven't really grasped this in mental health, but we're just getting going now with a new MAMS trial. It's called Multi-Arm, Multi-Stage Platform Trial in Early Psychosis, where we're going to look at repurposed drugs as the first sort of things to try and really just with an open mind say what's got a good chance of having an effect let's give it a go Uh, the analogy by max palmer who's the kind of king of man's trials is saying why would you build wembley stadium for doing a single football match It's, it's putting the infrastructure in place and then you can play as many football matches as you want and you can keep it going stampede that trial in prostate cancer has been going for 17 years changed clinical practice, improved lives, saved lives over that time. So I'm really hopeful and quite excited that we can do the same for psychosis. And we might not win all the matches, but there might be some entertaining penalty shootout. <laughs> Being England, we probably won't win all the matches. No, Andre, we'll at least learn something along the way. Thank you for sharing the positivity. Lovely to see you as always. Thank you.